Hey, uh, good afternoon and welcome to the post-Christmas season, pre-New Year's Eve season, whatever week you want to call it here at DFSArmy.com. I am your host, Chapadong. This is your DFS Minute brought to you by the one, the only DFSArmy.com, your one-stop shop for all things daily fantasy sports. Uh, coupon code CHOPPER is 20% off each month that you remain a member. If you're interested in becoming a VIP, getting all the content tools and coaching that are making people better players. And I'm going to focus on something a little bit going forward. Uh, kind of focusing on your fundamentals because the game has definitely changed. And I don't think people are staying ahead of the curve and studying and understanding how that game has changed, how they can still exploit it, and how to move forward. So I got asked a question today that was pretty interesting um, that goes right back to the very fundamental of which one's right for me. Should I be playing multiple entry tournaments or single entry tournaments? And the fundament, one of the fundamentals that doesn't change is risk aversion. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to kind of dive through that. So let me quickly pull up a little presentation slide that I built. Uh, again, I'm not a professional at this kind of stuff. If you like the stuff, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate every little piece of encouragement that I get. But more importantly, you get what you pay for. And with me, it's free. Um, single entry GPP versus multi entry GPP. Which one is for me is very simple uh, when it comes down to risk aversion. But first, let's talk a little bit about risk aversion the fear of loss is greater than the desire for gain in most people and that comes very 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 much to the forefront in the psychology of a single entry gpp player most of these guys are you only get one shot at this tournament and most people are going to play a little bit safer they're not really going to hang their balls out there than if they had multiple chances to do it three max gives them a little bit more of a chance to uh, take a little bit more risk because I'm going to build my optimal lineup first and then I'm going to maybe play off of that a little bit and then play off of that again a little bit. And they realize that as they build more and more and more lineups, their their true optimal lineup for their skill level gets a little bit less and less and less. And what they're hoping for is that one of those is actually the right combination of plays and that gets them into the money or into the winner's circle. So that single entry tournament is going to be for the risk averse player, which is most of us is going to be their safer attempt. Their, oh, I really don't want to go all the way there, but I do think that this might be the winning combination. And that is what they're going to play. So if the opposite of what the industry is doing is kind of what you should be doing to gain maximum leverage in a single entry tournament, you should probably be playing riskier than most because you're going to gain more leverage by being a little contrarian or by being a little bit off the wall. Now, too many people say, I take my cash lineup and I throw it in a single entry lineup. Well, okay, there's a lot of people doing that. What are you doing to be different? That fear of loss for these people is greater than the desire for gain. I mean, they want to win, but they really don't want to lose. And so they play it a little bit too safe. That is a fundamental that has been with DFS since the dawn of time. Do the thing you fear most and death of fear is certain. Mark Twain says, if you're afraid of it, do it. If you're afraid of taking that super contrarian shot in those tournaments, do it. And what you're going to do is become a better player because you're going to kill that fear. You're going to kill that, that, that risk aversion the more you get outside of your comfort zone and the more you decide to uh, take a chance. And if you're only doing it with a dollar or five dollars or whatever, you can probably afford to lose that while you learn, while you grow. Is it going to be uncomfortable at first? Yes. Everything always is when you start changing, when you start growing. That's a lot of times what keeps people back is that fear of uncomfortability. They get out there, they, they put their big toe in the water. They don't dive in head first. There's risk. There may be rocks in the water. There may be tree branches in the water. And my dad always taught me to dip my toe in first, play it safe. These people are playing those single entry tournaments. And these people are afraid to go all the way with their theories, with their guts, with their bold calls, and therefore don't usually have the chance to win that you might if you're willing to see that as a leverage opportunity and take that extra chance, okay? Risk versus reward, of course, we're covering that already, and that's what those, those tournaments become. The bigger the tournament, the larger the tournament, the more uh, risk you should be willing to take to win it because the reward is greater. You've got to find that balance for yourself. In some people, it's smaller, more winnable contests. In others, it is larger lottery ticket type contests. And to be honest with you, I think you should be playing a combination of both. That's what we're going to be talking about through uh, January and early part of the year. It's going back a little bit more to the 80-20 balance, a little bit more towards the ladder system. 
as I elicit or solicit my uh, my VIPs to kind of help me build as a community a rewrite of the ladder system. We're going to start that here in a little bit. So hopefully you want to be part of that and you want to come inside and be part of DFS Army's VIP program to access the coaching and the question and answer back and forth and back and forth that is going to help you also learn that system as we all relearn it together and revisit. Because some, again, a lot has changed in DFS in the last, say, three, four years. But not other things, there's fundamentals that have not changed. And we need to revisit those fundamentals. We need to rebuild our game, if you will, and start at the basics and move forward. We can always apply the principles that we've learned along the way, but we can't lose sight of what still holds true from the very, very beginning. Risk attitude, we've got two different types of people out there. You've got the risk averse that we've talked about that are seeking you know, to avoid risk more so than gain reward. And then we've got the risk seekers, and these are the contrarians. These are the people that are out there saying, I love the rush, I love the tournament, I love the risk, I love the action. This is the type of thing that's going to help me become a better player. And, become, and I'm going to tell you that the pendulum swings both ways. You've got your risk averse over on the left, and you've got your risk seeking over on the right, and both people are probably too extreme in their game. They probably both need to come back a little bit more towards the middle. And so that's what we're going to focus on is finding that balance, like I showed you here, between risk and reward. But before I leave you today, the one thing that I do want to talk about in the single entry and the multi-entry tournament phase is how do we handle the multi-entry? If in the single entry, we kind of took more risk because people are playing it safe with only one bullet, they're tending to play a little bit safe. They're not offering up their most risk uh, versus reward type of lineup where they're really going for the gusto. How do the multiple entry tournaments you know, factor into this as well? Well, your three max, your, your, if you can find seven max, uh, 10, 20 max tournaments or whatever, even the 150 max, you hear people say they are kind of balancing out, covering bases. And while that's smart, that's a little bit of a risk averse way to go about things. They're doing this to cover the bases so that they've got a better chance at something hitting. And so as they build, you know, they may put their first good lineup in there by themselves, you know, hand built or whatever, the second lineup, maybe third lineup, whatever. But the more and more and more they go, the more comfortable they feel in taking risk. I've got my bases covered. I've got the safe stuff figured out over here in the lineups I've already entered. So now maybe I can pursue this crazy game stack or this, you know, crazy uh, lower total game that might go off because there's a, you know, a, a backup goalie or a, you know, bench warmers taking the field, all the starters are getting rest, whatever the case may be. In a lot of cases, the more lineups those players build, the riskier and riskier and riskier they get. So in a lot of cases, now I'm not talking about winning, but I'm talking about getting a core of lineups through to the cash line. A lot of times the safer lineups do a little bit better there because the more risk those people take in the real risky stuff, I'm going to line up 30, I'm going to really go crazy here, line up 31, I'm going to go even crazier here and try and use my imagination. They're creating dead money. They're creating dead money lineups. And the more dead money is in those tournaments, the more you should be playing it safe, letting all of those people fail, and you gain your leverage by being smart and by not taking the risk. So th this is a very, very general attitude a very, very general concept that I'm telling you right now, but in your single entry tournaments, you want to take more risk than the casual player pool does. And in the multi-entries, you want to take less risk than the casual player pool does. Because what you're doing is you're letting the masses, you're letting the casual player create the dead money in both scenarios. And that's what's going to give you the leverage to gain spots on the leaderboard, to gain more ROI in your investment, whatever it is that you want to call it, whatever... Uh, lingo you like to use. The concept that I'm trying to unlock for you is to think about what the masses do and then you do something a little bit differently. If the masses are all going to this player, you hear us talk all the time, fade that player and pick up this other guy. But if the masses are building safe in one tournament, then you should be building risky. And if the masses are building risky in one tournament, you should be building safe. Here's where this all comes down to one phrase and you'll hear me echo it and then we'll get the heck out of here. When the world gets greedy, you should become fearful. And when the world gets fearful, you should become greedy. That sums up everything about daily fantasy sports in one sentence. There's just a jillion different ways to tell it to you. So I'm going to tell you in a bunch of different ways. But if you always think back to that core phrase, 
you will always understand the message that I'm telling you. When the world gets scared, you get greedy. When the world gets greedy, you get scared. Very, very simple. Think about that in basketball. The next time you get a player scratch or the next time you get, uh, you know, some uh, some ultra chalk guy that is announced as the value across the industry. When the people get greedy with that player, you should probably be a little bit fearful. That's my tip to you. This has been the DFS Minute. Hopefully you like this type of content. You click the like and subscribe button down below in the comment section. Of course, you'll always find the link to the information to become a VIP and join the coaching community that wants to help you become a better player. DFSArmy.com or coupon code shop CHOP triggers that 20% off discount. Each and every month you remain a member. Hopefully I see you on the inside. Hopefully you like this little bit of a different twist. And we'll do more of these if people seem to like them. Take care, guys.